chanting souls to Calvary, to the Prince of Flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on to him I must win. Oh, I want to see him to look upon his face. Then to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me live my poor oh, Lord. Here's a path for my life ever to rejoice. When before me below Christ from the mighty deep, then my Lord directs my part. to rejoice. At this time, I'm going to ask Elder Shaw to pray the opening prayer in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Guide me, O oh, great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. We are weak, but we believe that you are mighty. Just ask that you hold us with your powerful hands. Eternal God, O oh Lord and Savior, we want to honor you this morning for allowing us to be awake and out of sleep. O oh Lord, place us in our right mind, giving us journey mercy to be here in this very noble place. We give you thanks for the situation that you have brought us from and have brought us into this marvelous life. As we come, Lord, we ask that you open our hearts that as this things go for today, we will observe them and be doers of the word, or not hearers only. Bless our presiding bishop, the assistants, chairman of this great organization, youth department, and all the other departments of this great church. I just ask that you send a special anointing today. Touch each person now from the corner of our head to the sole of our feet. Where there are sicknesses, we pray for healing. We pray for divine intervention. Bless us collectively and individually. Bless those who may be on their way that they will reach you safe. Oh, Lord, and when we shall have come to the end of this day, everybody will rejoice and say, it's good for us to be here. When we shall be returning home, we pray that the same way you brought us home safe, you will take us back safe, and that the glory and the praise and the honor will be to your great name. Bless our beloved country, Jamaica, and beloved. We pray for those who are in authority that they will do right. For when the people be ruled who are right, then the rejoicing will be there. But if the wicked be ruled, then we know that it will be mourning. Have that own way, we pray. Guide them, allow them to remember that without you, they could not exist. So they will fear your name, O oh Lord, and work towards a better island and a better situation for each and every one. That at the end of the day, the blessings will fall upon your people. And the glory will be given to your great name. And we will receive the reward at the end of the day. Bless us now, we pray, and tell you thanks. 
We ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Praise Jesus. Amen. At this time, our lesson will be taken from Psalm 20. Amen. Please listen while I read. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble. The name of the God of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from thy sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept thy burnt sacrifice. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We rejoice in thy salvation and the name of our God will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know I that the Lord saveth is anointed. He will hear me from his holy heaven with the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down and fallen, but we are risen and sent upright, nine and hending. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Amen. Praise Jesus. Here ends a portion of God's holy word. Praise the name of Jesus. Lift your hands and praise Jesus. Amen. Amen. At this time, I hand over the rest of service to... Okay, at this time, we'll begin the anthem. I have made my choice forever. I will walk with Christ, my Lord. Not from Him, my soul can the name of Jesus. At this time, I hand over to our chairman, Pastor Garfield Jordan, in care of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Evangelist Lindsay. Let us praise Jesus, everybody. Praise Come on, let us praise Jesus again. Praise I suppose some of you are still a little groggy. Today being a public holiday, you would have loved to relax, but the king's business demands us here. All right, so now that you have um, settle it in your mind that I've got to be at Hambury. Let us worship Jesus now. Come on. Could we lift those hands and give him some praise? Come on. Could we shout some hallelujah in the house? Could we shout some hallelujah in the house? All right, the Lord Jesus richly bless you. Please remain standing at uh, this time. It is my pleasure and privilege to present to you our president, Bishop Delroy Newton Farr, who will... Uh, do the official welcoming and other things under his portfolio. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. God bless you and be seated. And be seated here once. No one ever cares for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take my sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cares for me. Can we say again? No one ever cares for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take my sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much. He cares for me. 
Praise the Lord Jesus. I extend all the greetings to the bishops, if there are any around, and all the pastors who are present in the house, officers all, you precious saints of the Most High God, our children, our visitors, and especially those who have recently accepted the faith. I greet you in the all-saving name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And on behalf of the executive board, I take pleasure in welcoming you here at Anbury in this, our conference day. We know that in every church, it's only some people travel. Some people will do all they can to send you or allow you to go, but they're not really traveling. So we appreciate you travelers who have taken time off, especially today being Hash Wednesday and also Valentine's Day. And many people would have had some plans for Valentine's Day. I can see some of the colors looking at us, red and white. Valent some coming in there displaying your valentines and you have to leave your valentine at home or leave your valentine appears until later so we appreciate you coming here today and we promise that we are going to be finished in due time that some of the valentine activities you can still carry them through as i stand here today our mind is always reflecting on our past leaders of organization, Bishop C.C. Watts, Mother Christine Watts, Bishop Germain, or Bishop Watts, and Bishop Reed, and B Bishop um, Richards, O.B., and Donald, and, and so many others, so many pastors from the different churches who reflect, and many of us are standing in their labor. I want to give God thanks for them, for what they did, the sacrifices they made, that to have made way for us. And today we are enjoying, in many cases, the fruit of their labor. We bless the Lord today, and uh, we come to serve him. There are many things that we have and you'll be informed later of some of the adjustments that we'll be making. Not because anything was wrong, but things and time have changed and the way two people have done business have also changed. As servants of God and I, you all, and as an old person, I want to, I want to, remind some and inform some of the benefits of serving God. And one of my ways of doing this is to remind us what the scripture says, that eyes have not seen nor ears heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of man, the things that God has where? You don't know where? in store, gentlemen, you are disturbing me, that God has in store for them that trust him. So there are many things in God that we don't see, we don't know, but God has them in store. God has them in store. And don't think that those of us who are where we are sitting today, that things were a bed of rose when we came. Many of you might not know what we have been through. Many of you might not have had the experience this morning as I was getting ready to come here. I reflected on when I just got baptized and went to church, life was so hard, and your, 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 your shoes, because I was always driving, have a hole in the bottom. 
Everybody know those things? Don't try no. And when you kneel at the altar, you could kneel like how you kneel today. The one with the hole, you hold it down. And you kneel on one leg. Can you imagine that? Because you are conscious that there are, there are foot of a hole and you, you put a piece of cardboard in it. Right? So if you kneel down and put your two legs to the congregation, everybody going to see the old line. So you put that one down and you kneel on the good one. Okay? I recall when I was about to take the right hand of fellowship, I had to ask my, my brother if they take off jacket at that, because I've never seen that ceremony before. And he said, no, you don't have to take off my jacket. Okay? Because I couldn't take off my jacket. First of all, the jacket. I borrowed the jacket. I borrowed the jacket. But this is what it is when you come to God. And somebody else said, if it is in this life, only we have hope. Look at it carefully. This life, only we have hope in Christ. Please note, in Christ, we would be of all men most miserable. So look at it. There is hope in this life in Christ. And there is hope in the life to come in Christ. Brethren, I thank you for what you have been doing. What we have achieved is not me. It's not just the ministers. It's you, your contribution, your hard work, your help, your whatever. All of us put together. And out of that, we are where we are. And we have, we have intention to go a lot further. Just want to remind you or inform you that in the next few weeks you'll be seeing some of us visiting various churches and you know that's for a good reason and convention is coming up. We want to achieve some things before convention and we want to do some things a bit differently to have a different result. It is said if you do the same thing the same way you are likely to have the same result. God bless you today. Stay with the Lord. Stay with the Lord. I say one more thing, and that is, uh, we don't, we sometimes quantify or qualify salvation only by what we get. But one of my ways is to say, salvation is not only what you get, is what God saved you from. And all the things that you have read and heard about that people have done and is doing that are not right. Had it not been for the Lord that called us on time, we could have been involved, not probably directly or indirectly, and life would have been misery. God bless you today. Stay with the Lord. He has good things in store for you. And share the goodness of the Lord with other persons. Let them know. And remember... God called us to be fishers of men, not scalers of fish. Got that? Fishers of men and not scalers. Okay? Let's, whatever we do or we do it or we dress or we operate ourselves, we are witnessing to somebody and we don't even know. Somebody will say later on, you know why I came to the Lord? Because of this person's behavior. Oh, they always are so this, and they're always so that. And everybody, anybody ever asked you yet, which church you go to? I would like to come to your church. Why? Because of the way we conduct ourselves. God bless you today, precious brethren. Stay with the Lord. And I am sure he has good things where in store. You don't see it, but it is in store. Can I say one more thing? Strategy. All of us pray, but we don't strategize. There are some prayers that can't be prayed at bedside. When Anna had her situation and she wanted a son, where did she pray? She went to the temple and prayed. Okay? Yes, when Ezekiah got that bad bit of information from that evil king, what did he do? 
he took the letter to the temple and prayed. There are some prayers can not pray online. You have to come to the temple. Strategize. When Paul and Silas were thrown in jail, they used a different strategy. They prayed and praised. Prayer and praise. Prayer and fasting and praise. Praise. It's amazing what praises can do. Not to watch me praise, but all of us praising together. Change your strategy. I remember doing an examination which was very crucial to my existence. And I devised a strategy. I asked a prayerful church sister to accompany me to the venue. I asked her to stay in the car and pray while I go in and do the exam. It might not be. It's not that I'm trying to influence God. But I had the confidence and I walked boldly. Uh-huh. And all these things. Pray for our children. A good way to pray for them is when they are sleeping. You go in the room and pray over them. And rebuke the enemy over them. Am I talking to you? Know your family. Love your children. Tell your children, I love you. You are nice. Don't tell them about only what the bad about them. Speak kindly to your children. And nice and say, I love you. Have a good day. How was your day today? Did you enjoy the day? And all these things are strategies. Strategies. And let the children hear you speak positive. And when you are hurting husbands, don't go home and tell your wife and children who hurt your church today. Not a good thing. Bear your pain. And don't tell your children who oh, not this and that. Bad strategy. Tell them because they will have a dislike for the person and dislike for even church. Speak positively. Bear your pain and take it to the Lord in prayer. God bless you today. Have a wonderful day at the Lord. In Jesus' name. Back to you. Brother, when the train comes along, sister, when the... If Bishop says train, if Bishop says plain, it's plain. All right, let's redo that. My brother, when the... When the, when the plane comes, could we all stand to? You see, from, like me who come in from Kendall and they orient me to sing. Go, go Brother, when the plane comes along, sister, when the plane comes along, my eyes may be blind and I cannot see. My feet may be late and I cannot see. What meet me at the airport when the plane comes along? My brother, when the plane comes along, sister, when the plane comes along, my eyes may be blind that I cannot see. My feet may be lame that I cannot walk. But you meet me at the station when the plane comes along. Shall we worship Jesus? Let us worship Jesus. That ought to be a lesson in adaptability. Not because we know things an old way. If our leader says it's another way, we adopt, we chill, and we relax. Praise the Lord Jesus. You may be seated. Now, for that little part, I wasn't even on the program. So, I need to do my little thing and get out of the way that the real program can go on. But before, we have to put our hands together for the presentation by our presiding bishop. One of the things that I've always known that we have a little weakness in is that we do all the spiritual things and the practical things, we leave them out. Bishop drew us back today. Strategy in prayer. Where you pray, what you pray for, how you pray. We only want to know so we are praying and getting a spirit. And we could. That's not it. There's strategy. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Put your hands together for our presiding bishop one more time. All right. So, we don't have a program for today. Not a printed program. So, we have to be following. But electronically available 
there is a program and Minister Sinclair and the, the audiovisual team can allow you to have a program um, via data, whether on your phone or other devices. So we are dealing today with two primary things, time management and leadership strategies. And it means that whatever we're doing, we have to be observing both things as we go throughout the day. Something happened last year, we were having a session and we were dismissed at a certain time. And some of our good friends, I'm not telling if any of them sitting on my right, was asking why we finished so early because at the time they still had things to do at the back. The point is we have to get accustomed to time management and Bishop has said that we need to be over in a certain time we are in somewhere 2 to 30 to be leaving here so that we can get on with the rest of our lives but two important young people from among us will be presenting on these two topics and we're praying that we pay much attention as we say we don't have a program so we'll have to listen to the announcement we will break for the individual sessions, there will be one team up here, there will be another team at the back, and there will be another team at the side, and then another team will be here, Sunday school, um, youth, men, women. And we'll be taking care of the internal business. There won't be any presentations from the individual departments before we go, because as Ella Shaw has taken us to a place to recognize that, we have to be conscious of the management of time. And even the persons who are going to be presenting, it's not going to be a two-hour presentation that you can fall asleep. Within that nice little half an hour, we will pack in what we can get, listen to the important things, have a little time for a little discussion, and then we, we, we conclude. There, is, there are lunch lists that are available for circulation that we can just note on the list through your church, what you want to have for lunch so that we don't have to take two hours for lunch and then we quarrel that boy, them juggle is so and it boring and so on. So the lunch list will be circulated, in, indicate what you want in a short time so that we can have ourselves organized and that we can be off the scene in good time and that we get back to Kingston, Port Antonio, St. Elizabeth, wherever in good time so that we don't have to quarrel. Shiloh take up one more of my whole day. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus. And so at this time, I invite our chairman to come forward and I get out of the way as I manage the two minutes that I got. Put your hands together to receive our chairman, Pastor Jordan. Well, um, it is by his confession that he was in the way. So I will neither add nor subtract. He said he was in the way. All right, the Lord Jesus bless you. Nice to see you all looking so lovely. I look and there is a number of reds. Yes. Seem, and red and white seem to be the dominant colors. And I look and I see people from St. Mary. I see people from Kingston. I see people from Manchester, St. Elizabeth, St. Anne. Uh, I'm looking and persons are still coming. But I conclude by saying I see Clarinda and then I leave them out. I see people from all over. And it's so good to have you here today. And I'm sure you will find that you didn't waste your time in coming, but you will thoroughly enjoy today. The Lord Jesus richly bless you. All right, so we have two presenters. The first of which is going to be done by um, Evangelist Pernell Smith from the Linda's Road Assembly. And he will be presenting on... Management of effective leadership. Time management, rather, for effective leadership. Let's put our hands together as we welcome Evangelist Smith. Sister Kefian is going to come and do the formal. You see, in the house, Sister Kefian. So you realize that this brother is not an importee because sometimes we think nothing in, the, in China is good. We have to import. So she'll tell you a little bit about him. Bless the Lord, everyone. All right. So our first speaker today, Evangelist Pernell Smith, is a 
program manager at the NCB Financial Group, in which he is responsible for leading a team of experts in the field of project management to undertake key initiatives driving the company's mandate of efficiency, governance, and customer experience. Before transitioning to the financial sector, Mr. Smith worked for a combined 27 plus years from 1995 to 2021 in the telecom sector for both Digicel Jamaica Limited and Flow. While at Digicel, he served in the capacities of Senior Project Manager, Network Operations Center Manager, Network Management Systems Manager, Senior Systems Administrator, just to name a few. After having left Cable and Wireless Jamaica Limited now flow as a senior telephone technician. Some of Mr. Smith's major achievements include an honors degree in computer science with management from the University of Technology and a master's degree in computer science from the University of the West Indies. He is a certified project management professional and a certified scrum master, amongst other qualifications. He's also an appointed justice of the peace for the St. Andrew region. He accepted the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on November 1st, 2009, and received the gift of the Holy Ghost on April 7, 2010. He's a devoted and willing brother in Christ who makes himself available for service to the Lord. Amen? He is currently serving in the capacities of an evangelist, appointed evangelist, youth director, Sunday school teacher, leader of the audiovisual team, and board member of the Faith Tabernacle Basic School. He also serves in the capacities of men's president and youth president at his local church located at 55A Lindus Road, Kingston. Mr. Smith is happily married for 22 years to the lovely Tanya Smith, who he absolutely adores. And the union is blessed in producing one offspring, daughter Dana Smith, who he treasures. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, could you put your hands together and welcome evangelist Pernell Smith as he speaks to us on time management. God bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir. Wow, wow, wow. Good afternoon, morning, actually. Um, let me greet our president, Bishop Delroy Parr, or... Vice President, Bishop Kingsley Andrews, and our Chairman, Pastor Garfield Jordan, all of the board officers, bishops, pastors, ministers, saints of God, guests who are here, and those who are watching or viewing online. Let me greet you in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ. I'm pleased to be asked to spend some time with you today just to have a brief discussion on time management for effective leadership. Today is Valentine's Day, and I would not let the moment pass to recognize and appreciate my beautiful wife, Tana, Tana Smith. Can you just stand so people can see who, who is the one that keeps me solid and grounded? and who is driving behind the scenes. She's not as loud and boisterous as I am, but she's the one who is behind helping me to, to go on. And everything that I do, she supports. And to mention my daughter, Dana, as well. Um, we have a brief moment to, to have the discussion. So we want to look at time management. And I, 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 I mentioned for myself that it's just a timely reminder. I know that most persons would have understood and know how to manage time already in some shape, some way, some form. But it, it's always good to remind ourselves. It says for effective leadership, 
I, I know there's another presentation coming on on leadership right after, but I want to ensure that you're aware that as a part of leadership, time is crit critical, time is essential. So you have to, people will be looking at you to see how you're doing things as a leader. We have leaders in various capacities right now, from our, from our president to a leader of our youth department or serving in the capacity of, a, of an executive member of a youth department. So we want to go through. I'm going to cover a few topics. What is time management? Why manage time? How to manage time? Doing what really matters. Uh, three tips from Harvard, Harvard Business Review on success versus failure for time management, things to keep in mind. And then I want to touch a little bit on time management in church because we're a church body. And then I'll wrap up with just a reminder of things we discussed and then we'll take some questions. All right, so what is time management? Time management refers to managing time effectively that the right time is all allocated to the right activity. The right time is allocated to the right activity. In other words, we need to identify the time that we have, we need to prioritize the things that we're doing, and we need to ensure that we're hitting the right activities. If we're not doing that, our time will be wasted and we will not be achieving as much as we want to. Effective time management allows individuals to assign specific time slots to activities based on their importance. So I mentioned that you need to, we need to be able to identify the things that are important and work on those. Spend time focusing on those. Why do we need to manage time? We need to manage time because first and foremost, it's a limited resource. We acknowledge that we don't have all the time in the world. James said in, in James 4 verse 14, so for what is life? What is your life? It's even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and vanisheth away. In Psalm, David mentioned that we have what? Three score and ten years. Another ten years by measure of faith. But it's per adventure 80 years. Three score and ten is 70. Add ten more to it, give you 80. So we're looking at average 80 years. We know some people make it a bit longer, but if you check now, the, 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 you'll probably find somebody who is 120 years, but you're probably not going to find more than that. So we have limited time. So time is very essential. Several things are competing for our time. Right? There's multiplicity of things that are competing for you to be here, Bishop mentioned, that is Valentine's Day, it's a holiday. People have other plans, but we choose to be here this minute, this moment. Things are competing for our time, so we have to manage the time that we have. It's a fast-moving space that we're operating in. Things are coming at you very, very quickly. Requests are coming at you at lightning speed. It's like you're flying down a highway of the things that are, are, are coming at you. People are calling you, you know, information for, to read and make sense of, you know, to, to reread, you know, meetings that you're being invited to. All of these things are happening, and there are things that are taking up time. We operate in a very dynamic environment, which means that things are changing. It means some things that you learned before, you know they're not going to be obsolete in a shorter time. And it means that you have to constantly be keeping up to date on, on things that are happening. And if you are in a leadership position, people are looking to you to help break down what is happening, whether in the church or in the work or in the society at large. People are looking at leaders to help make sense of what is happening. As a leader, you have to dedicate some of your time to things that are meaningful, that, are, that, 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 that you're able to pass the information and assist others. We're looking at a time where the information galore coming at us is so hard to manage. I consider it right now the chaos that we're in. If we look at social media, Instagram have 10.5.4 million views every, every one minute. Snapchat 3.47 snaps created every minute. YouTube have 694 hours 
of video every minute. 694 hours in one minute. Google has 3.7 million searches within the minute. And Zoom, the Zoom that we have come to love and use now, God bless Zoom for it helps us with our services. A lot of us use Zoom services. But if you check, sometimes you have in your, in your, in your, on your smartphone several Zoom meetings of even church sessions that are going on at the same time. And now you have to choose whether you're going to join Linder's Road Session or Lariston or Knock Patrick or Kendall. You have to make a decision as to which you're going to choose. The information coming to us is overwhelming. And the overwhelming information sometimes causes easy distraction. And if you're not managing your time properly, you're going to be jumping from left to right and center. And it becomes easy to waste the time. Time is precious, but we can't afford to waste it. Tips to manage time. And I'm trying to go through as quickly, and I hope you're following. We'll take some questions at the end. Um, key to time management is balance. Make room for important tasks. And we're going to touch on important task in a little. You must finish the tasks that need to be done first. Identify the things that, are the, you, that you need to have done. Put them first and get them done. Sometimes the important tasks are not necessarily the easiest tasks. And sometimes we get tricked into trying to do the thing that is easy to check off. And it's the important things that need to be done suffers. That's not effective time management. Put the things that you need to do first up front, the most important things first. And it's important to recognize the difference between important and urgent. Not everything is urgent is important. And not everything is important is urgent. And we're going to touch on that a little. Set goals. Set goals and follow a schedule. If you don't have a schedule following, you're going to be all over the place. You're going to forget some things. You're going to be do, spending time talking when you should have been working. You sh you're going to find things that are distracting you and just paying attention to it because you're not goal-driven. Set the goals. Set the things that you want to achieve and dedicate the time to those. Set them in order of priority and dedicate time to that. Learn to say no. I know that is sometimes difficult. I will put up my hand as one of the first ones to say, I often try and help people with whatever they need, and I'll, you know, give off myself a lot. But it sometimes becomes counterproductive to effective time management. Sometimes you take on more than you can manage, and as a result of that, you're not able to finish anything, or as much as you ought to, sufficiently. Sometimes you get through the things that you're, you, you're trying to finish, but they're haphazardly or half-heartedly done. So you need to ensure that you're saying no to some things. Put them off. Let somebody else do it. Multitask if you can. I say if you can because a lot of us might think we're able to multitask, to do two or three things at the same time. For the better part, it's a myth. For the better part, the best we can do is flip between the tasks, right? If you're listening to me now, you're listening to me. And if you start to listen to your friend beside you, you're no longer listening to me. So if you can, there are times when things will happen that you're waiting on input from something else and you can move on to doing something else and go back to it. But multitask if you can. Learn to delegate it's important to be able to delegate some of responsibilities. And especially leading the church, Bishop, the chairman. Sometimes there are things that you need assistance with. I remember when you look in the, in the book of Numbers, I think it is, when, when Moses was leading the children of Israel. And the, the people had so many things coming to Moses with. And Moses cried unto the Lord and said, is, Are these my children? Did I give birth to them? These people, I need help. And the Lord said, choose 70 men. Choose some people and appoint them to some of this work. Because he needed help. He recognized that for him to adequately deal with what the, 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 the people need, he would not be able to do it alone. So he had to be delegating some tasks to those persons. Find your peak performance time. And this is important. If you are a morning person, Schedule the most important things that you have to do for the mornings. Because that is when your, your 
ready to go. You're at your best. That is when you can take 10 minutes and move through something. If you leave it to do at a time when it's not your optimal time, you're going to spend a lot of time trying to understand it, trying to get it done. So don't use that peak period for you. When your peak performance time, don't use it to be working on, on frivolous things or, 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 or less meaningful things. Use that time to work on the things that are most important to you. Right? I want to go back to urgency and importance. I said to you that not everything is important is urgent. And not everything is urgent is important. Now for me, you might ask, what's the difference? They sound the same. If something is urgent, it's important. If something is important, well, it might be urgent. But you do have things that, well, importance for me is something that by. It happens that there are things that are important. They bring good value to you, whether it's education, whether it's learning the scriptures, whether it's, you know, to, to buy a piece of property. These might be important. And there are times when they are urgent as well. Because if you don't make hay while the sun shines, the property that you're looking to buy might be sold to somebody else. So no, this is important, but it's also urgent. You have things, however, that are important, but not necessarily urgent. If I'm here talking to you right now about time management, and somebody decides to get up and ask, why did God die for us? Why did Christ die for us? Now, that's an important thing. That's something that perhaps I need to spend the time and talk to you about. But it's not urgent. It's not something that I have to put down the mic and go and answer. When it is important and it's not urgent, you schedule time for it. You put some time away to say, all right, I'll take that, but I'll deal with it after. After I'm done with the presentation or this is finished, let's have a discussion. That's important because you need to know, and it might be what is saving your soul. It's not necessarily the most urgent right now. Urgent things, if it's not important, but it is urgent, that's something you delegate. That's something you pass on to somebody else. In Moses, let me use the example from the apostles. When the start, church started, and they, 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 they were, people were selling things and bringing it into the church, Peter and the apostles decided, no, we need to go and preach the word. But no, we're serving people and sharing things. This is, it is important. But it can be delegated. It's a, but it can be delegated to somebody else. Right? Or should I say, it's not, it, it's not important. And not important in this case is for Peter and the apostles to actually be doing it. They have more important things to do. They can pass that on to somebody else who is not doing all of what they're doing at the time. So it's important, but it's not urgent for them. And we're looking at for ourselves. Is it important or urgent for us? That is, that is something that Peter could have delegated or the apostles could have delegated. And they chose some what we call... Um, beacons to appoint that unto them. If it is, on the other hand, not urgent and not important, then don't even bother with it. If it's not urgent and it's not important, then it's something to eliminate. Discard it. Get rid of it. It's not adding any value at all to what you're doing. So just move on past that. Okay. So, in terms of three things to be mindful of uh, to ensure you have success in time management is one, awareness, two, arrangement, and three, adaptation. Awareness is to recognize realistically that you have time is a limited resource. You don't have all the time in the world to do anything. So recognize that you have a limited resource and you have to make the best use of it. Arrangement is designing and organizing your things. Plan, set your goals, set your aspirations. Schedule the things that you want to get done. And put your most important tasks, the tasks that have value to you, put them ahead. 
the ones that have value and are urgent are the ones that are paramount and the ones that need to be first. When you wake up in the morning, those are the first things you should do. If morning is your best time, if, if night is your best time, then you do those before you go to your bed. Because that's when you are your most effective. And adaptation. We're operating in an environment where things are changing all the time. If we're having a service and we recognize that time is going, we might have to cut some things that, are, that can be cut. If, we're doing this, if I'm doing this presentation and I'm running out of time, I might have to drop a slide if it's not as important as another. We have to adapt to use, to make the best use of the time that we have. Right? And I want to touch now, in a, in a few minutes, on time management in the church. Because we're a church body. First and foremost, we have to have respect for others. Respect for others in terms of showing up when we say we are showing up. When we set a meeting, we need to set a meeting time for X and we need to be there for that time. As a leader, you can't set a time and then as a leader, you're turning up late for the meeting. That is disrespecting the persons that are there and the time that those persons have allocated to it. You have to stay on time. You have time slots allocated to different things. We want to make sure that those time slots are kept, are maintained. Concentration span. Concentration span. We have an audience. Averagely, it's about 30 minutes from the age of about 9 to, 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 to anywhere 16 plus. 30 minutes is the rough average that people are really able to concentrate. It goes up to about 50, 50 plus minutes. I don't see anything in all of my reading and checking that says over 60 minutes. Anybody at any age is able to concentrate for all that time. It means that we have to be succinct in the things that we're doing. We have to, 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 to time box our things. In an average 30 minutes, 40 minutes that people will be able to understand and participate in. Spirit versus time management. We're apostolic, we're holy rollers, tongue talking, by what well, the liberated name of Jesus Christ. We born again, we baptize in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and we love to speak in tongues. And we love to feel the anointing and get in the spirit. But when you're in church, there's a time and a place for everything, a season for everything. Sometimes while the anointing is going on, there are persons who don't understand what it means to speak in tongues. There are persons who don't know what is going on. They walk off the street and come into the assembly to hear something. And they don't understand. So sometimes our leaders will have to, you know, quiet down, calm down. We'll have to say, move on. As leaders, it's a responsibility. And as audience, is something. A congregation has to be respectful of the fact. And don't think that the pastors or the elders is just trying to mash up the work of God. That's not the case. At the end of the day, the word of God must be preached. And persons are there to hear the word of God and need to hear it. Bishop Reed, God rest his soul in peace, is always saying, no matter what, the word must be preached. So we have to be mindful of that. We have to exercise self-control. Use wisdom to adapt. I mentioned it before. We're going through and time is going on. Even the pastors or the bishops or whoever is leading, whoever is even doing the introduction, we're off to a late start, though we shouldn't be. Then for introduction, which can't be given 10, 15 minutes of introduction because it affects the service. It affects the person who's going to walk off the road wanting to hear something and can't hear. Self-control. Sometimes we, when we take the mic, you know, and I know for myself, and when we want to talk about God, oh my God, you want to feel good, and you want to say the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. But, but there's a time, and there's a place for everything. Time boxing, there's reasons why these things have to happen. Testimony service is another thing. Testimony is not for preaching. We have it all the time. We see it all the time. Or it's not to incite the church to go to a higher level. Testimony so that you can speak of the goodness of God. So when you have the opportunity to testify, you give your testimony. Not read out the whole Bible, sing out three songs, and then go on. And I speak to the congregation, but I also speak to the leaders. Because guess what? When 
I've been to services, and especially, you know, and you have 20 ministers on the farm, and everybody has to give a greeting or just to, you know, give a testimony, and every minister go up there and basically give a minister a man. And we have to be mindful of that, because what we do, ministers, pastors, bishops, when we do that, what happens is the congregation is thinking that is acceptable. So if bishop did that, or pastor did that, it's okay for me to know we'll go ahead and do that. So we have to be mindful of that. And moderating is really not the praise and worship session. You always have a praise and worship session in church for somebody who's appointed as the praise and worship lead to come and do the praise and worship. If you're moderating the service, usually somebody in a leadership role is moderating the service. Use wisdom. If there's a gap that you can offer, offer to sing two or three more songs, then you do it. If that's not the case, if time is running, you're already putting, you know, emphasis on some other things. People testify less than they should, let's say, because some people start from the early stages right up to get through to the testimony. But if you are the moderator and you realize that that is happening, then you either cut some of the testimony or you don't go ahead and start to, you know, prolong the moderating, and the preacher is there with the word that God has given them to deliver and can't deliver it. So I'm just speaking of management of the, of the church overall. I, I, I think time is running, so I'm just going to wrap up, right? Because I'm here talking to you about time management. It will be really bad if I'm up here for 40 minutes, right? <laughs> so just wrapping up. It is not okay just to get things done. Time is precious. So you have to make sure that the time that you're using is not just getting things done. It's getting what? The right things done. You have to ensure that the most important things to you, not necessarily the urgent things. Urgency usually, most of the time, comes from somebody else. Most of the time, you're minding your own business. You have your own schedule, and somebody, some brother, some sister, some pastor, some bishop, anybody come to you now and inject something into it that now becomes urgent. Sometimes you have to say, Bishop, respectfully, sir, I don't think I can manage that right now. Sir, you can please ask somebody else because you have to learn to say no. You have to look at what is most important to you and put it there. You should not be doing anything that is not important. Remember, we talk about important and urgency. If it's not important, leave it alone. Delegate it or get rid of it. Because it's either, not, it's either, it's, either it's, 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 it's urgent but not important, or it's urgent and not important either. Urgent and not important, you, de you de delegate to somebody. Urgent and not important, just scratch it. Get rid of it. Learn to say no, we touch on that. And um, leaders overall need to manage your own time. Time is important. It's limited. Respect your own time and respect the time of the people that you invite to talk to. The people that you're working with. The people that you invite to a meeting. Keep your meeting the way it should be. If the things sometimes you have in a meeting and people bring up things that are not important, park it. Put it into a, a, a parking lane and say, we'll get back to it. Right? We'll get back to that. We need to cover this in this particular meeting, and that's what we're trying to do. Family and me time. Sometimes, especially in church circles, I hear a lot of persons complain that they don't want to be a pastor wife or a bishop wife. And the reason for saying that is because they know that the job of a pastor and a bishop is time-consuming. You have a congregation that you're in charge of, and they need help. And they will always come to you. However, you, you will need time for yourselves as well to recuperate, to meditate, to just get to a place of zen that you can be able to function better and help people better. And you have to be mindful of your family time. Because just as how the church need you, your family need you and even need you more. Bless the name of Jesus. So in closing, our time is very important. Our time is limited. 
and we have to make the best use of it. God bless you. Any questions? We have about five minutes for questions. If there be any. All right. So there is no question. Okay. Great thing, sir. Thank you. I, I, I can't say that I know that I'm the best person for that. And, and if you remember one of the things that I've mentioned earlier, I mean, personally, I put myself where God wants me to be. So I'm always willing. But it also would mean that he'd probably have to shift something else out of the way. Because there's a lot of things that, you know, have to be doing. And if I was to tell you, yes, then it probably would have been me not managing my time effectively. Because I have just told you that sometimes you have to learn to say no. Because you have to examine the things that you're doing. And while that might be important, it might not be the most urgent for me at this point. <laughs> but I'll take it <laughs> and I'll look at what can be done. Any other question? Um, that was so good. Thank you. And Thank you. I just want to say that, I don't know if you said that, but all of us have 24 hours in a day. None of us have more than. So it's Correct. really how we manage our time. Thank you so much. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. And well said. Uh, praise Jesus, everyone. Praise him. Uh, just, just one um, concern. Yes, sir. Uh, it's, is there a danger in the aspect of adaptation? If there's a danger in the yes. aspect of adaptation. Yes. Well, definitely. Um, and, and in life, everything that you do, you have to examine carefully. You have to look at what you're doing and whether it makes sense to adapt. Right? Adaptation is not just because something happened, you jump to something else. There's a cost to what you're doing and there's a cost to adapting. And you have to weigh the, 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 the difference between continuing in on the path that you're on and moving to something else. And it goes back again to what is important and what is urgent. If what is important you're already doing, then there's no need to adapt. If what, if what you are doing, we mentioned in the presentation that things are changing. So if you are going down a path and you recognize that this path that you're on is going to lead you, is no longer going to lead you to where you want to be, then it makes sense to assess your situation and adapt to a better situation that yields better value to you. Oh, there's another question. Somebody, you have the mic, Deacon? <laughs> Praise Jesus, everybody. Praise him. Um, lovely presentation, um, Evangelist Smith. But my question is, all right, in managing your time, it no. may involve managing people. Right? Right. And you spoke about delegation and adaptation. Right. Tell me, how do we deal with persons who may be in your team who resist change? Okay. And getting v them to adapt to good time. V very good question. And thank you for that. There are always some persons who are very resistant to change and very resistant to new things. As a leader, what you have to do is help them to understand the vision, understand why this change 
is important. Understand the, the benefit to themselves, to you, to the organization that changing to this will, will cause. So you have to, there's a difference between management and leadership. And the difference is that leadership requires buying and following from persons. So you have to get them to understand why we're doing this. And once they understand why this is going to happen and the benefit that this will yield, the difficulty is not going to be as much. I think I'm really out of time now. So uh, that, that, I think I don't, I'm not able to take any more questions. Thank you very much for all the questions so far. And I'm at Linder's Road. If you have questions, that's my pastor, Pastor Richard Bowles. So you can always get to him. God bless you, Jesus. When Brother PJ was much younger and more available and had more time, I could call him anytime and get him to do almost anything nowadays. He manages his time so well, I can't even get through to Brother PJ. Put your hands together for him. So, sir, I'm not sure he's available to do anything else right now because his hands are tied in terms of managing his time. But put your hands together for Brother PJ again. <laughs> I'm just here to share with you that the lunch list is available. We just need one representative from each church just to gather the information as to what is needed for lunch and that one person just fill in the information. We want to try and organize ourselves so that all of us don't have to be going to the canteen to be telling what we want. If we pre-arrange the thing, it makes it a little smoother. Our bishop has one time-sensitive input that he'd like to make and we'll accommodate him at this time. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Very good presentation. Uh, it is said, time is the only commodity that God gives to every man equally. Check that out. 24 hours a day. As we say in Jamaica, 24 hours make a day. You get the same, I get the same, you get the same, you get the same. And the other thing is, a manager is a person who gets things done through other people. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Bishop. Wow, could we put our hands together, please, for the presenter? I, I know the only regret we have is that we couldn't have listened to him a little longer. And that is one thing we must always learn to in presentations. Always finish and want the audience to want more. Don't let the audience, as we say in Jamaica, say, me, this is a dead fiend all right, quickly, we just want to thank the Lord for all our wonderful pastors, church leaders who we have here today. Of course, our president and vice president, Bishop Farr and Bishop Andrews are here. We have Bishop Alvin Smith. We have Pastor Shaw from Johns Hall, Pastor Everton Charlton Newton, Pastor Levy Goshen, Pastor Pauline Shalom, Pastor Rosden Johnson, Pastor Almanda Simpson, uh, Pastor Peter Smith, She's in the office, so you may not see her. Pastor Richard Bowes, yes, he was the young man making the rounds with the mic. Pastor Paul Ch Chana, Pastor Sharon Edwards, Pastor Brooks from Stephen Run, Pastor Paulette Frank, and Pastor Barbara Kelly. I hope I did not overlook. Yeah, did I not say Pastor Saloon? I thought I did, I did. Well, let me call her name again in case somebody wants to hear her name again. Pastor Paul in Saloon, the Lord bless you. Um, you. Do you feel like it was worth coming? Ah, come on, put your hands together and celebrate the Lord, everybody. All right, so we have our next presenter will be touching on the topic of principles of effective leadership. Evangelist Cheryl McClockin will be the one to do so for us. Let's put our hands together, please, and make her welcome. I see she's ready and rearing to go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Praise Jesus, everybody. Praise Jesus. I brought my phone so that I can keep time. 
As the brethren in Mount Prospect will tell you that sometimes they have to remind me. And I'll keep my eyes over here for the signal to go. Thank you so much. I want to greet you all in the matchless name of Jesus. It really is such a pleasure for me to stand here with you today to share with you on such a very, very important matter, the whole matter of leadership. And it's an important time because we are seeing where there are so many people who are aspiring to leadership without having a full understanding of what leadership entails. I'm watching time, so I'm getting straight to the point. Leadership structures can be found everywhere, and we have to respect leadership structures. It started in heaven, and Satan himself has his own leadership structure. So when Paul tells us about principalities and powers and rulers, he was not picking names out of a hat. He was talking specifically about a leadership structure that is in the demonic realm. Today, we are talking about leadership. Leadership that can run across um, church organizations and leadership that run across regular organizations. And so, because of the sheer importance, I want you to understand that it's not about the appointed leaders or leaders who are in official uh, capacities but everybody inside here is a leader in their own right. And if you are not an appointed leader, you are a leader in waiting. Now, you will notice that they did not read a paper to introduce me. That was deliberate. I asked that I introduce myself because you are going to hear about my leadership journey and you're gonna hear about what inspired me to be a leader. But I'm going to quickly tell you a little bit about myself. I am Cheryl McLaughlin. I'm the daughter of Minister James McLaughlin. Where is he? I'm very proud to say that. And I am where I am today because of that man and my late mother, Evangelist Constance McLaughlin. All right? Now you're going to hear my journey. Um, but before I do that, I want to tell you where I get my inspiration, all right, to be a leader. I am the Deputy Managing Director of the Heart NSTA Trust. That is the work that I do. And you're going to hear more about that because the leadership is a journey. Some people are born leaders, but to be an effective leader, you have to learn it through your journey. I am inspired by David, King David. I'm inspired by King David because I can relate to him. King David was not a perfect man. He was a man after God's own heart, but he was not a perfect man. He was the one man in the Bible who broke all 10 commandments, and he did it within a short period of time. He stayed away from God for at least nine months before a prophet had to come and tell him that he had sinned in the sight of the Lord. I am inspired by him because he trusts in God. He trusted in God. And one of his last words found in 2 Samuel 23, when he was going now, getting ready to die, he said, he that rules over man must be just ruling in the fear of the Lord. Very, very profound statement that I want all the leaders to be thinking about. Must be just rule in the fear of the Lord. And how do we know that King David was effective? We know that King David is effective because if you continue reading in the same chapter I mentioned, you will hear about King David's mighty men. So we have the mighty men of David. We had the one who used one spear and killed 800 people one time. That is skill. 
we had one who remained in a field and killed and killed and killed until his hand, the Bible said his hand clave to the sword that is endurance. We had a time when Dave just came out to the cave and said, oh, if I can have a drink of the water down by Bethlehem in enemy territory. And three of his men got up and went and fought through a whole group of enemies just to get water for this man. This is what you call effective leadership. You know a leader is effective because of the followers and because of the followers that they themselves develop. So my leadership journey started roughly 30 years ago. I was employed at Petroleum Corporation of Jamaica as a consultant. I did not have to go into office nine to five. They gave me a company vehicle. They gave me a gas card. Some of you don't know what that is, not true. The younger folks. It means that I got a card and every time I want gas, I just give them the card. So I can get gas and drive all the place around the country and it's not in my pocket. At that point, I learned to lead myself because principle number one is to be an effective leader, you have to learn to lead yourself. Integrity, doing things right even when nobody is looking, that is something you develop when people give you all of these things that you could do. I learned that from my parents. And the other thing is learning to manage your time well. Self-discipline is another thing that you develop when you're learning to lead yourself. Professionalism, obedience, respect, you learn that when you're learning to lead yourself. If you do not have any of those, you cannot be an effective leader. Leadership is a journey. It's not something that just come upon you. David himself had to learn to lead himself. He had to learn to kill the bear. He had to learn to kill the lion. He had to learn to kill Goliath in order for him to be the effective leader that he was. Now, shortly after I left PCJ, I was employed in the Bahamas. I went over there as a lecturer, and I was responsible for teaching math, biology, and chemistry. I was a leader in my own right, but there was something I learned in the first several years that I was in the Bahamas. Because when I went there, I was told that my, I was told all kinds of things about the president of the college that I was in. I was told all kinds of things about my supervisor, and none of it was positive. But again, to be an effective leader, you have to be a good follower, because there is a followership. And if you cannot simply follow, you cannot be an effective leader. So you have to respect the cheer of the leader. You may not like the leader as a person, and I urge you to pray about it. If you have a leader that you think you don't like, pray about it. You may not like the personality or anything, but you must respect them. You don't always have to agree with your leader, but you must respect the decisions of your leader if you expect to be an effective leader. And so I went there. I wasn't treated 100% well. I was a foreigner. But guess what? I did the things that I needed to do. And I did it because before I went to that job, I had developed those self-directed processes. I had developed the sense of responsibility that I needed 
to become a good follower. There were times that I erred, but some of my greatest learning came from the mistakes that I made. So because I did that and I respected everybody, and I was doing some good work too, I was promoted shortly afterwards to a post of college prep manager. I was responsible for managing the college prep population that is there. I was not leading people, but I was leading processes, right? I was leading processes. Everything that I learned from my experiences before caused me to be learning. But one of the greatest thing I learned during this phase of my career was the importance of continuous improvement. Because effective leaders, principle number what, that three or four, effective leaders are about continuous improvement. You look at a process that you put in place, you do not think that it is already perfect, but you must see the need for improvement. And you see the need for improvement sometimes based on feedback that you receive from other people. If you do not receive feedback, then you will have nothing to act on and it becomes problematic. You, you, you lack operational efficiency because you are not thinking about continuously improving your processes. And so I did that for about two years. And because I continuously improved and the processes got more efficient, I was promoted again. Because you have to understand, and also Daniel and David and all of those mighty men in the Bible, you will notice that they did not remain on one level for too long. Because the more you learn and the more you improve, somebody that's out there is going to see the work that you have done. I got promoted again to head of the department. Now this time, I was leading more processes, and so I had some people to help me to move the processes along. So now I was leading myself, because you lead yourself for as long as you live. I was leading processes, and I was leading the people who were responsible for leading the processes. It's not easy. I had about 10 people from about seven different countries. I had some Bahamians, I had Jamaicans, I had somebody from India, I had somebody from Brazil, I had somebody from Guyana, I had somebody from BVI, I had somebody from, did I say Canada? Yes. One thing I learned, if you want to get the processes going, you have to respect the people who are responsible for moving the processes. Evangelist spoke earlier about Moses. Moses couldn't do everything by himself. He had to delegate. But when you're delegating people and you don't care about their health, do you think that they're going to do the things properly? When you don't care about their family life, when you don't care about anything about them, do you think that they're going to operate with the level of efficiency that will allow your processes to move? The simple answer to that is no. And so what I had to learn is to get to know them. I took the teacher from India to an Indian restaurant. And while we were sitting there, she told me everything about the pan and the, and, and the meats and so on that we ate. I learned about how she, 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 she lived her life. I was wondering, how come you, you order beef? Because I had the thinking that Indians don't eat beef. And she explained all of that to me. That made a difference because she saw that I cared about her as a person enough to want to learn about her and her culture. And that made things run a little easier for me. My, my, my processes were not as efficient as when I was running it myself. And so it became necessary for me to develop some skills and that is what effective leaders do. Effective leaders develop 
the skills of those persons that they lead. In that way, you are not too much criticizing the work that they are doing, but you are helping them also to grow along the way. And that is very important. We have too many leaders who sit with their skills and sit with their potential and they do not for a minute try to help the persons and bring them up to a point of leadership. You know why? They are thinking that they are going to come and take over. And that is not the mindset that we need to have at this time. That is a soul spirit that is still rampant in our organizations and rampant in the world. Pa David was such an excellent follower. I am telling you, Saul tried to kill him at least five times. And David cried like a baby when Saul died. David killed the man who claimed that he killed Saul. Um, David looked after all of Saul's relatives. He was very good friends with Jonathan, and he made sure that Jonathan's son is taken care of in the midst of everything. That is how you follow, not the person. You follow the office of the leader, and then you will become effective at that point. And so I struggled along. I can't tell you that the six or seven years that I spent in that post was smooth. I struggled learning other things. I had to learn that when you're leading, you have to lead with the rod and the staff. Because sometimes they're going to make mistakes. Yes, man, the people you're going to lead, they're going to make mistakes. And so what you have to do is you have to operate in a way so that when you are chastising them, you know, them come out of your office laughing and smiling and feeling good about themselves. And so you lay down a sandwich, you take the rod and you, and then you pull the staff and you pull it over. My dad was good with that, you know. My father was a principal, you know that, right? And he had the beat and he had the, the, the strap that he used to write, do not spare the rod and spoil the child. And after you get the whooping, then him just rub it off and said, just don't do it again. And that is, that is the best way to go because you are going to have them for a long time. You need to get to the point where, where you're, when you want things to get done, you are able to give them a call and said, can you do it for me? They need to see the rod as a means of getting better. And it takes strategy to do that. It takes a certain level of humility to do that. And so it brings me to the next principle that effective leaders must be humble, willing to admit that they are wrong, willing to take responsibility for their actions. And this particular um, principle really came home to me when I moved back in uh, to Jamaica perhaps about 10 years ago, and I took up a position at the National Education Inspectorate, NEI. If you're a teacher inside here, you must know about NEI. Now, when I went there, and as I grew along in my leadership journey, my responsibilities became greater and greater. And it is when the responsibilities became great, that is the stretch that caused you to grow. Now, coming into the ministry, I had to face a set of people that, oh my God, they, they were different from what I was used to. When you go to tax office, do you, do, you, do you have certain experiences when you go to tax office? You're there late and you see people, yes. So I had to deal with some very difficult employees when I came into the Ministry of Education. And that is also a part of the learning process. 
When I went into the Ministry of Education, that is the NEI, I went in as a senior staff inspector. I got the job. I was neither senior, neither was I an inspector. Not a lot of people like that because I seem to have jumped a couple of grades. But when God gives you something, no business with what anybody wants to say. I stayed in the job for about a year and I was building on all of these leadership skills that I had developed. And then I was promoted after one quick year, you know, as deputy chief, deputy chief inspector, deputy chief inspector. The portfolio meant that every school in Jamaica, every public school in Jamaica, I was responsible for the inspections of these schools. I was responsible for ensuring that the principals got their inspections reports. I was responsible for providing recommendations to the principals who had failing schools or principals whose schools were not performing at the highest um, level. And so what it meant was that because the responsibility grew wider and wider, then I had to tighten up my processes and I had to double down on ensuring that my, um, my officers were working together. And so one thing that I had to learn very quickly is that I had to build the team. The team had to be, there had to be a certain level of camaraderie. And the people who hate them one another, I had to break that down. And that's an effective part, that's a very important part of leadership because effective leaders bring people together. They do not become a point where they are turning everybody against each other. And so when people come and tell you something about Brother Harry over there, so you don't engage in no conversation about Brother Harry, but you bring things and deal with things fairly and deal with things in a just way. And so I found that I brought them together. We would have our pizza nights. These are officers who work late in the morning, late in the night. They come to work early in the morning. You know what motivated them to do so? Because every morning they came, they saw me. And every evening, most evening, they tell me goodbye. Because effective leaders lead by example. You cannot tell your people if you are leading them to work hard when you are lazy. If you want them to work hard, let them see you working hard. Don't come and say, I am working, 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 and you can't see the work that is being done. Let them see you working hard. Let them see you doing the things that they would do. So that even if you delegate something and you have some time, help with the sweeping up of the, of the floor as well. And don't believe that it is too much above your head or below you in order for you to move it in that particular way. So that is very, very important. I stayed with NEI for perhaps about four years before I was transferred to another agency in the ministry. And this is the National College for Educational Leadership. I'm watching my time, Minister Bowes, but I'm getting there. I see 11 minutes left. I went to the National College of, Edu of Educational Leadership in the post of Director of Programs. In terms of all the things that I had to manage, again, all of these things were of national impact. I was responsible for delivering training to all the school leaders, primarily the principals. And so most principals out there would be familiar with me. But also, I was responsible for the design and the delivery of training programs for the middle leaders, the vice principals, the grade coordinators, everybody like that. And it was not an easy task. Again, I had a small team of probably about 10 persons again. And all the leadership qualities that I developed over time 
it's almost as if each stage I went, minister, it was perfected because you have to practice these things. And so when I came there, I was carrying on, but I also had to deal with some very difficult employees. And I had to learn that with difficult employees, you have to first find out what makes them difficult. When you find out what is making them a difficult employee, then you address that, and then you can move it on from there. And so I had a difficult employee. I know that this was a bright young man, but the young man just wasn't sticking to his job. He wasn't doing what he ought to do. And over a period of discussing and talking to him, I get to realize that he felt like he wanted to be in charge of more things. And I looked around and saw the portfolios that were there, and I gave him one, a low risk one, because I wanted to see how he's going to manage. And I was there, I did not micromanage. I was there, I looked at a distance, and I watched this difficult employee become an effective manager. Because effective leaders will have to take risks at times. And when you take the risks, you have to make sure that they are mitigating strategies so that in case he dropped the ball, I was ready now to pick it up from there. But he performed so very well. And everybody else who became a little bit difficult, I just draw them closer and bring them into my office daytime and talk to them and find out what it is happening, what is happening with them. There was another key lesson I learned during the time of COVID. What I learned is that people have some needs. They have some basic needs, you know, that is outside of what you want from them. And so you want them to do the work, but they need probably just somebody to talk to. You want them to do it properly, but they need a little bit more guidance. And so during COVID, I learned about emotional intelligence. I know you have heard about it before, but it all takes into consideration empathy and figuring out how different people are feeling. Walk a day in their shoes. And that plus humility will ensure that your workers, your, your, your followers are comfortable, willing, and able to do the work. If somebody comes and tell you that they are sick, don't look at them and tell them, say, you don't look sick. Oh, what do you, what have you? If they're sick, they're sick, right? You don't want them drop down dead inside your space. So if somebody come and tell me that they're sick and they can't come to work today, I said, never mind, my dear. Did you get to go to the doctor? Show the empathy. Don't respond by saying, so who are going to do your work? Who are, who are going to do this if you don't come? Are, are you sick again? Or what do you know? No, man. You have to show the empathy. And there may be persons who lie about their health. That is very, very wrong. I would never, ever do that. But always give them the benefit of the doubt. If they are sick, some of them, some people wear their illness very well. There are some people that I'm looking at now who are probably very, very sick but to look beautiful right about now. So that now is very, very important. At each level I stayed, you know, because I can't tell you everything right now. I faced challenges, I faced tribulation, but I put God at the center. I was never afraid to go down on my knees and pray some prayer and said, Lord God, have mercy upon me. Very, very important, you know, because if you're in a leadership position, whatever leadership position it is, consider yourself to be placed there by God to learn some things as well, because the effective leaders are learners, because you learn from your own mistakes. And so I remained at that position for a little while, and then last year now, Round about this time, I received a call 
telling me, because I'd done the interviews and so on, that I was successful in the current position that I am now in. I am the Deputy Managing Director of Heart NSTA Trust. Based on my experience, I jumped a couple of grade levels, to be honest with you, because before I was leading perhaps about 10 persons, now I have the entire department is, is, is almost 2,000. So you understand the big jump. The ones who report directly to me is probably about 20. The work, brethren, it turn up. And so I had to be able to juggle all of these things. One of the very important things I learned getting into the Heart NSTA Trust is the importance of delegating. Our previous speaker spoke about that. But when you're delegating, as I said to you before, you have to earn the respect of your staff. I've been there for one year. I must tell you this, that the Heart NSTA Trust, we report into the office of the Prime Minister. And so it is through this agency that the Prime Minister uh, is able to report on some of its achievement. Any achievement in education and training comes through the, uh, the Heart NSTA Trust. I am responsible for all training and programs in the NSTA Trust. And so if I drop the ball, it is going to be felt because the Prime Minister is going to get on the phone with my boss and my boss is going to have to deal with it. So it's not very easy what I'm doing now, but God has been good because all the things I learned from before, I learned and that is what is keeping me through now. One of the biggest things that I've learned since I started a year ago is the importance of taking responsibility for your actions, two minutes, three minutes. Importance of taking responsibility for your actions. There are times that things happen, daddy, things will happen, you know, daddy, <laughs> that you don't know anything about, but it falls under your portfolio. It is your responsibility. You see me back? It has to be broad. So just recently, we have a Hope Summer Work program, and there was a little bit of delay in getting the monies out there. And I came back, not sure, and I came back from um, a little break that I had, and I got a message that there was a lady, she is very irate, and she has promised to call the radio station. She's talking about this young lady, and what have you, she must have called the radio station, and what have you. And I did not delegate that one. It was urgent and it was important. I took up the phone and I asked for her number. I did not ask my exec assistant to do it. I did not ask the director who is in charge of the home summer. I did not. I took up the phone and I called her. And at first, she started with the irate behavior. And then I responded to her. I said, give me the name of your daughter. Give me your phone number. Give me her phone number. I'm going to get back to you before the end of the week. I may not come back and have the money ready, but I'm going to come back with an answer before the end of the week. Before the end of the week, brethren, I was on the phone with the young lady. I told her, I have identified the reason why your daughter has not gotten paid and we are working on it. And I got them to get down and pay all the people who needed to be paid. One day out of the blue, she called me and she said, oh my God, God bless you. God bless you so much. I said, your daughter get the money. Yes, she get the money. What you have to tell everybody about how I, I handled the situation and how I did this and how I did that. 
It is but the grace of God. When people come and quarrel, say they don't get their certificates yet. Yes. They don't get their certificates yet. And they come irate. I have to take the responsibility and said, yes, my phone is off. Yes, I am going to make it happen for you. And so leadership is about taking responsibility for your actions. David took responsibility for his actions. He came out and he said, yes, I have sinned. There was a young man who wanted to box him down because of what he did. And when they tried to defend him, they said, leave him. Because maybe God wants to punish me for that which I'm doing. So please, leaders, to be effective, be humble, take responsibilities for your action, be a learner, be sensitive to the needs of others, be just, but most importantly, lead in the fear of the Lord. Heaven bless you. I know in the world that we live today, you can't even hug without permission, but we went to the same school, we had the same principal, and so we have nice, good habits. Bless the Lord Jesus. No, I'm, I'm, my heart is so warm today, and I, I'm so proud because, oh, chairman, it's not stopping. Okay. I'm, I'm feeling so good because in one day, we have unearthed two new talent, and the opportunity exists that anywhere you are and you have talent, it doesn't matter what era it is, that Shiloh can benefit. And I feel so proud today. Put your hands together for her. And what she didn't tell you, and I like how she did her presentation in that it wasn't the traditional introduction, but she used her introduction throughout the presentation to say, why am I okay to be telling you what I'm telling you? What she didn't tell you, or anybody didn't tell you, is that her title is not only Miss Cheryl McLaughlin. She is Dr. Cheryl McLaughlin. Please put your hands together for her. And the way Shiloh has molded us and brought us from nothing. Some of we did live over there, so, and brought us to a little something that we can. But we have, we have been so empowered today by the fact that we can lead with dignity. And we can lead with respect. And it, it don't have to be a bully business. And it don't have to be loud. And it don't have to be in charge and knock chess and that sort of thing. And hear how Dr. McLaughlin has woven her way into the system. Good apostolic, tongue-talking, Pentecostal, come from country just like me. But God used little things and little persons and little opportunities to make big statements. Time management, I have to stop. What next we're doing, Rev? I am happy you recognize that there's still something called time management. <laughs> Come on, let's put our hands together, please, for the presenters. And I know there are persons here with all kind of questions to ask about the heart trust. Don't ask Brother Jordan, because I'm going to refer you to Dr. McLaughlin, right? So... Mr. Sure. you brace yourself. You might have more questions than you catered for today. Thank you also, Evangelist PJ. Oh, there are a couple of questions. Come back, Sister Cheryl. And uh, can I tell you a secret? I know I'm a little girl. But look what the Lord has done. Hello. God bless you. Come. Homegrown, homegrown. Are there any questions? I was clear as mud, right? Come, yes. sir. Just come forward. Oh. oh. <laughs> Builder in chief. <laughs> no, um, it's not a question that I have. Um, I'm impressed with the presentation and how it is done. But what I wanted to do is um, if there were maybe five key points, you could just summarize them for us. I want to make a note of it. Okay, I, I thought I did, but, but let's go. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, so I started off by indicating that 
Effective leaders, they learn how to be effective. Effective leaders, um, audience help me, you are spoke to. You have to learn to lead yourself first. Listen, man, what? Take responsibilities for your action. To be an effective leader, you have to be a good follower. You have to be humble. You have to be a continuous learner. You have to have emotional intelligence. Know how to use the rod and the staff. Bring people, bring people together. Cons people, consider people's needs. Build your team. Show empathy. Be a learner. Say that again, me. Open, be open. Yes, develop the skills of your learners. Trust in God. Take risks. That's so much things. Be a praying person. Fear God. Develop your skills. Yes. Oh, my God. You guys are listening. I feel so good. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you so very much. I just want to commend the presenter for such wonderful and an important uh, presentation. But there's just one pertinent question that comes out at me. is How do I differentiate a ruler versus an effective leader? A leader versus an effective leader. A ruler. Now, the, the word ruler is a very strong word because it suggests domination. And so the Bible talks about Satan as the ruler of the earth. So if you are a ruler, it means you don't really care too much about what the people are saying. You, it's, it, it's like you do what you want to do. That is not effective leadership because essentially you lead them out of fear. Leadership is about getting people to go the way that you want to go. You bring them together and you make out that clear path based on your visionary skills and you are able to lead them along. Not rule over them and say, you must do this, you must do that. The leaders know by example, they are able to lead people along, people will follow, people would want to learn, people will see your vision, people will, yes. Christian, thank you. All right, all right, okay, okay. But, but we certainly would need follow up on this. Thank you. No problem. I know the, the, the audience, sorry, don't move. One more person. I know the audience would be edified, sorry about that, but I know if you come with another one, somebody can come with another one. Go ahead, Deacon Henry, please. God bless you. Um, I'm really okay. impressed with your presentation, my lady. Uh, question here What if I am intimidated by those that I lead? All right, so intimidation is closely linked to, to fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he has given us the power through love and a sound mind. If as a leader you feel intimidated, then this is something you need to take to God. It's only God that's going to build your confidence to lead in the way you ought to be leading. You're always going to have difficult persons who are going to try to tear you down. And that is why without God, nothing will happen. So courage is a, is a characteristic of a good leader. When you go into a post, not everybody going to agree with you, but you have to stand firm. And your being able to stand firm is going to be a function of what God has anointed you with. And so if you're an anointed leader of God, you stand firm and the powers of hell cannot prevail. Thank you. 
Sister Tapra is going to be doing a presentation at this time. So we praise Jesus, everybody. Bless God. And we thank you, Dr. McCockin, for such wealth of knowledge. Shall we put our hands together for her one more time? Bless God. And on behalf of the Shiloh Apostolic Church of Jamaica International, we want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule today just to impart knowledge onto us. And we hope that it will not fall on deaf ears. Bless God. But that we'll also put it into practice. May the Lord continue to bless you. Evangelist P.J. Smith. Sister Opal. Evangelist Opal. I've been chided or scolded of Kingston Lane. Please come and do the presentation for us. Formerly from Mango Valley. Get it right. <laughs> We bless the name of the Lord, uh, Brother PJ, Kingstonian, the Kingstonian. Yes, just a stone throw away. Um, it's a privilege and a pleasure to make this presentation to you. I hope that you continue to do all that you have been doing, and God continues to elevate you, and you keep building Shiloh. God bless you. Praise Jesus, everybody. All right, I know Shiloh. Sister Karen Simpson of New Building, come. Karen Simpson of New Building <laughs> is coming. And so, whilst we're getting the, please, if you have a form with the lunch orders, if you keep it to yourself, you know, you will be left in the dark. So please hand the forms to uh, Pastor Charlton or to me, right? Or Pastor Channel immediately. So whilst this has been processed, we're going to clap our hands and we're going to sing. You have not seen the forms yet. All right. It will come to you now. Okay. Shall we praise Jesus? Can we lift up holy hands and praise Jesus? Let's magnify the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah! Shout hallelujah one more time! Praise God, praise God! Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus, what a wonder you are! You are bright than the morning star! You are favor, much favor, than the leaves that go by the way! Lord, I wonder you are And you are brighter than the morning star You are clearer, much clearer Than the lily that goes by the way Star. You are fairer, much fairer than the lily that goes by the way. You are precious, more precious than gold. I feel like running, skipping, praise the Lord. What He has done for me, He has set my spirit free. I feel like running. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. Oh, I feel like running, skipping. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. He has set my spirit free. I feel like running, 
make a praise. Praise the Lord for what He has done for me. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Come with power and fill our temple. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blessed Holy Ghost, we welcome you. At his word, he carry us through, right through to the promised land. Is the battle may be hot, 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 and the conflict so Go rocky the road as we travel along. Out a little longer, and Jesus at his word. Right go to the promised land. Go oh, the battle may be hot, 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 take so. Yes, rocky the road as we travel along. Longer than Jesus at his word. He can be through. Right go to the promised land. Never me yet he never failed me yet Jesus Christ never failed me yet Anywhere I go I want the world to know Jesus Christ never failed me yet He never failed me yet he never failed Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Anywhere I go, I want the world to know Jesus Christ never failed me yet. Oh, Daniel, He surely will deliver. Oh, Daniel, surely He will deliver. Daniel God, surely will deliver. Daniel God, surely will deliver. Daniel God, surely will deliver. Oh, you only love to him by faith. Daniel God, surely will deliver. Hallelujah. 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 So if you have not yet seen the form or your name is not on a list for lunch, you could just show your hand, please. So we can get a form to you. All right, so there's one person that side. All right, okay, and Bishop, yeah. Well, Bishop, we have to come to you, Bishop. Don't worry about it. We'll get to you. All right, shall we praise Jesus? 
Shall we praise the name of the Lord Jesus? As we have been charged about time management, we are going to have to take only... Uh, Reverend Chana will be coming to us now to give us a little summary of the things, the wonderful things that are happening here with respect to the building. Unlike the other presenters, Pastor Chana has nice 10 minutes to do what he's doing, and then afterwards, we will break for lunch, and lunch is a half an hour, because remember, the objective is to, not even seeing the time now, for us to be dismissing by about, what I have, Rev? Quick. Still planning to dismiss by 2.30, that we should be on our way, and so our lunch time is a half an hour, and then we will do the break in for the individual session. Please put your hands together to receive Pastor Shanna from the Malton Child Apostolic Church and he will take his 10 minutes to tell us about where we are with respect to the building. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Bowes. Praise Jesus, everyone. Come on, praise Jesus again. Praise God. Um, let me greet everyone in the precious name of Jesus um, and to to welcome you to Hanbury, this is our 2024 conference. So far, we're enjoying ourselves, aren't we? Yeah. Amen. I think the two presentations that has gone on before were very, very, very impressive. Amen. And we are going to learn from them. And we hope that as quick as possible, we can repeat um, um, those, those and others. So it will take us to another level. God bless you. Um, not much to say today, but that um, we are still on, the, on the, the development of Hanbury to make it as, as comfortable um, and accommodating for everyone. And so, as you would notice, we, we, let me just um, go quickly. We have started our, our preparation for, for um, this year's convention and beyond. So, if you look just to your to the rear we we have started just just last week to put on those two um additional spans of roofing if you notice it's not yet complete because uh i think monday we were working and so those two spans are on so let me tell you what the scope is just for the the purlins that are the 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 the, the um Purlins that go across and the sheeting, um, it's over $2.5 million or thereabout. Amen? So that's a lot of money. And we're not talking about the two beams that go down that way. So to complete that section in covering the, 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 the roofing, we would need at least two of, those, um, two of those beams, those long ones that go in that direction and another um, $2.5 million worth of um, purlins and zinc to, to close in that section. Now, what a day that would be when we, when we do that. Amen? But I know we can do it. I know we can do it. And so that's, um, that's our ultimate um, goal. Um, in, the, in the days coming, we have an, an additional 12 sheetings to go up there. And so we would have completed... Um, when we put in those, two, those 12 um, additional sheets we would have completed that two span. And so um, for convention, we would have that area covered. The other area that we are working on, we are just, just since week, we have, um, or last week, we have started back um, around the dorm to put up the staircase so that the staircase around the, um, the back can be, can be um, properly covered. So if it's raining, you can go upstairs to the dorm without, without um, getting wet. Those are the two things we are trying hard enough to finish um, for convention. Well, that one is already complete, but the dorm section around there, whatever we can do to make that dorm complete and comfortable, we'll be doing that. If you notice those two dorms down there, uh, we, were, we, are, we are going to be doing some remedial work on them to prepare them for convention. Learning from the last convention that um, some people were sort of um, uncomfortable and so on, but we'll try to make it as as, as comfortable as possible. We have garnered some funds from the last in-gathering, and so we are, we are going to be working on, on the water catchment system. However, 
that system will not be ready um, for convention because convention is just about, um, what, six weeks away? Six or eight. But just a short um, time away. The rest of February and the rest of March. Yes, six weeks. Right. So the most we can do is to locate the, the spot where the tank is going to be built because we're, we're trying to put in a tank that will um, hold about 40,000 gallons of water that can run a convention safely for, um, for seven days from Sunday to, to, to Saturday, right? Um, even though we might not um, keep conventions um, for that time anymore, I think those days are gone when we have a convention from, um, from, uh, for eight days. But when you come back for a convention, you should see the foundation, at least the foundation or the lining out of that um, tank to collect water because we're having water issues which we have to solve to keep an effective convention. But we have some funds that we have, we have, we have garnered from the, um, the last in-gathering, and that will be put to use right away. So generally speaking, um, we, are, we, are, we are preparing as much as possible the dorms around there, the grounds, the dorms down there, and the outlining of the tank for our next convention. And for those who are coming to Hanbury for the first time, um, are there any persons in here coming to Hanbury for the first time? Could you stand and let us see you, not just putting up the hands? Uh, okay, great, 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 great. Right. Welcome, 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 welcome. You're missing out on, um, on, on a lot. And for you, we just want to let you know that our bathroom facilities presently, um, the male bathroom is right here, the female there. But across where you see Bishop's office, there are additional two or so um, um, bathrooms, so you can use those. We understand that the traffic is heavy around there because I think we made plan, but we're, we're not too sure that so many persons are going to be here um, today. But God bless you. Um, and if there are any questions, let us know. We, we also would continue to, um, to solicit your support in our building project because guess what? We want money. This building is going to cost millions to, um, to, 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 to complete or to bring to a, to a stage that is going to be closed in. What we are trying to do is to, as, as much as possible, close in this section so we can get some of those chairs that you are sitting on. We can purchase them for our own because each time we, we keep a function, we have to rent those and they're at a sizable amount of money. So um, let me just give you a little idea though because suggestions are coming in and, and we are taking the suggestions. There's a suggestion that is pending and we are working on it that um, the, 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 the building that we have here currently, we are going to change the, the, how we interface with you. So instead of having the pulpit here, we are going to have it to the side, turning that way so that we can have more persons um, closer to the speaker. Because if you notice here, if you are up here, you can't really see the person down there. Huh? So we are going to be turning it that side. And so we have, we have to put some plans in. Right? And that we are working on. The other thing is that this section over here, when you walk out of these doors, you are going to walk on top of um, another section. And we want to get to that as quick as possible because that will house the kitchen, the cafeteria, and... Uh, What we call it, a, um, a, a, a store. The, the word always escaped me. A mini, a mini mart, right. So you'll have a mini mart, you'll have the, 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 ca the cafeteria and the kitchen. And that is going to be extensive in terms of size. So when you go into your kitchen to eat, everybody can be, I mean, in the cafeteria, everybody can be seated. And you'll have a, a full service um, um, Mini Mart over there, where you can buy anything. When you come to convention and you, le you leave something, you forget something, you'll be able to purchase that. And as soon as possible, we need some funds. It's going to take us about $20 million to, to cover that um, section. Not to finish it, you know, to, to, to cover it completely from down there back to there so that we can have um, the downstairs section. So when you walk out on here, you'll be walking out directly on, on, a, on, a, on the top of the, um, those facilities, right? And then now we'll consider what is going to go on top of there. 
right? So those are the plans that we have, um, short terms. And you know, the long-term plans is to have this building close up completely so that um, we, can, we can use the facilities for other purposes, including renting. People are asking us for use of the convention center right now, or the apostolic churches um, are asking us for the use of the convention center. We, we, we would want to, to let it out, but then um, we have some risk involved, and so we are holding back on that. But the more you give and support us, the more we can get to that point. So we're asking you, I don't know if um, Bishop um, will permit, but <laughs> if, 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 if you so desire, you can still make your special offering, special donation. In fact, somebody um, is donating, I think, some blocks so we can start closing up some of that side of the building. So if you want to make a donation, call any one of us on the, on the development committee. The chief persons on the development committee is myself, Ella Charlton, Pastor Charlton, and Pastor, Pastor Simpson. Others are there, but you can call any one of us in, in, in confidence, and we'll take your donations. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Uh, one other issue on my, my um, colleague is, is, is reminding me of. We, we, are, we, are, we are falling back on the, the assistance that we get in Hanbury. Um, just for instance, when we're having functions in Hanbury, it is very critical that we get help from our churches. Just um, like you show us today that you're interested in your organization and you're interested in, in the development, we want you in, on those occasions to help us. For example, when we are preparing um, for a function, yesterday we were here, we asked our pastors and, and others to come along and give us some help. And uh, sad to say, it's very disappointing that I don't even want to call the names or the numbers of the persons that were down here yesterday evening and we left here about 10 30 and i'll tell you um why because we had to sprinkle the floor with water and the couple persons that were here had, had to sweep it clean so that the dust is not on it and and those chairs came yesterday late in the evening and we have to wipe every single one of them for you to sit on additionally we had to put them out because the person who delivered them stuck them right in that corner and we had to take, down them, take them down one by one and put them out for you to sit on. These chairs are locked away. They are ours, the ones that are, are padded. And we had to take them out of the room around there one by one to put them out here. And I'm telling you, there weren't 10 persons here. And, so, and, and it happened before and before. So what we're asking, when we announce, um, we normally put announcements in our Sunday school, the, the, the Department of Christian Education group, formerly the Sunday school department. That has a far reach. Plus, we, have, we, we send information to our, our, our pastors, um, um, our, our group. And last night was just, it was terrible. We were abandoned, so to speak. We can't allow that to happen. We have to prepare the place for you to be comfortable, but if we should pay for somebody to do all of these things, then the money that we are collecting will be going back out there to, um, to pay for these things. And I think it's better when we build with everybody's input. When we come here and we, we do a little work, we leave quicker and, 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 and we feel more justified because we buy into the project that is at Hanbury. If you don't buy into the project that Hanbury is going to fail, right? So if you just come to functions without the, 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 the support. We call it the, um, the, the behind the scenes um, support. It's not going to work. And it's the same thing that happens at your church. When you're having functions at your church, you go. That was how I learned it. You go, you, you dust, you, you sweep, you, you, you do the different things. And when the function comes, everybody is proud because it was everybody's input. The same thing that we want to do for Hanbury. I'm just, I just want to, to, to let you know that um, the few of us on that, on that um, development committee, we are not the persons. It is you. So I think what has happened is that since the development co committee has been formed, what has happened is that people have left that um, responsibility to myself, Elder Charlton, and Elder Simpson, and a few others. They say we must come down here and do everything 
to make the functions um, um, happen. No, it can't. Because that is put, put, putting so much stress on us that we don't have time for other things that we should have time for. Right? So we are asking for your understanding, please, and to give your support in the future. Convention is coming up. We have a lot of work down here to do. Some patching, some, 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 a little painting, a little touching up here, a little touching up there. Six weeks. And we need help. If you can help, just call us. All right? I will make the arrangement. My time is up. God bless you. My builder-in-chief, brother-in-law, put your hands together for Elder Chana one more time. Praise him, praise him. And if anybody is asking you to point out one or two things that Shiloh is in fact doing, if you're, if you're stuck at one, the building is it. We are proud of where things have moved from and the direction in which the building seems to be going. At this time, we're going to be inviting two persons from this side, one from this side and one from that side, to assist us with the collecting of the offering. Preferably strong persons, because if we get a whole of money, we need help to carry it, all right? All right. And we're going to invite at this time Sister Tapper, who will be coming to give us an announcement and lead in um, a song so that we can be collecting the offering in fine style. Put your hands together for her. All right, so we praise Jesus again, everybody. Bless God. So we just heard our leaders telling us how much plans they have for us. Bless the name of God. And we're going to ensure that we give them our support. Wherever it is that you can lend your support, it would be greatly appreciated. Now for our general convention, March 31st, we will be worshiping from our church that's your home church and in the night we come for our rally and it's rally convention sorry uh begins monday to thursday so that's april 1st to the 4th and if it is that you desire any other information then please feel free to reach out to your church leaders all right bless god all right so we're going to collect the offering at this time a country where no twilight shadows deepens. An ending there where night shall never be. It's a city where no storm clouds never gather. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. A country where no twilight shadows deepen An ending day where night shall never be It's a city where no storm clouds never gather Oh, this is just what heaven means to me what will it be when we get over yonder and join the throng upon the glassy sea? We'll greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. When at last we see the face of Jesus Before whose image are the loves of thee And when they crown him Lord of all I'll be there Oh this is just what heaven means to me Say what will it be when we get over yonder Join the throng upon the glassy sea. We'll greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven means to me. So, what will it be when we get over yonder and join the throng upon the glassy sea? We'll greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever. 
All this is just what heaven means to me Say a country where no twilight shadows deepen Unending day when I shall never be It's a city where no storm clouds never gather All this is just what heaven means to me Say what will it be when we get over yonder And join the throng upon the glassy sea We'll greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever All oh, this is just what heaven means to me And when at last we see the face of Jesus Before whose image all the loves of thee And when they crown him Lord of all I'll be there this is just what heaven means to me So what will it be when we get over yonder And join the throng upon the glassy sea We'll greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever Oh, this is just what heaven means to me Say what will it be when we get over yonder And join the throng upon the glassy sea We'll greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever Oh, this is just what heaven means to me Say what will it be when we get over yonder Join the throng upon the glassy sea We'll greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever Oh, this is just what heaven means to me So what will it be when we get over yonder And join the throng upon the glassy sea We'll greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever Oh, this is just what heaven means to me So what will it be when we get over yonder And join the throng upon the glassy sea We'll greet our loved ones and crown Christ forever Yes, this is just what heaven means to me. Come on, let's praise Jesus. Please stand everywhere I ask God blessing on the offering in Jesus' name. Our righteous eternal God, our Father Jesus, we give you thanks. We honor you, we glorify your name. Thank you for this day. Thank you for the offering that collected from your people. I pray that God may bless you, sanctify it, and I leave it in your hand one more time as I say thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Sister Tapa. Give her a big, big hand. Come on, just lift your hand and give God a praise. Can you shout hallelujah? God has been good to us. And we are learning from we are here this morning and it's good to be here don't it and what you know it refresh your memory what you don't then we learn new things so each and every one of us going back home should be leaders in our own rights wherever we are so each church is will be better off than yesterday and to manage our time so we're going to manage the time by having lunch for half an hour now is 1 16 so quarter to two we should be back here and we're not coming back 
the Sunday school will be having their session here. They normally be the biggest group. And the men will be going in the back. Somebody giggle because I said in the back. Oh, in the office space around there. Okay. Uh, the women will be on that side. And the youth department will be on that side around there. So each group, you need to set your area. The Sunday school don't have to do anything. So the women, I think it's uh, or that table is yours. One is down there already. So you move some of the chairs, them can get some help from the brothers. Set the area. So while you eating and you finish, you'll be going to your different areas. Remember, 2.30, we are looking at. And there'll be observer coming around in each groups. So we'll be having observer in the youth department, observer in the women's department, youth and Sunday school. Each groups will have in two observer, pastors. I don't remember the names of those who are going into different areas, but Elder Jad, myself, Elder Chana, Ella Simpson, Ella Bowes, Pastor Peter, Pastor Salome. Right, so those, those are the persons that will be coming around. So if you are from the youth department, you're not going to the youth department. So Ella Chana is from the Christian, you're going to men. Right, so bear that in mind. God bless you. Enjoy your lunch in Jesus' name. Where, where's the section? Where's the section? The section, again, the men will be in the office, the women will be over there, and the youth department can either choose behind here or on that side. The youth department and the Sunday school will stay here. Oh, oh. The, larger group would stay. the larger group is the Sunday school. So the larger group stay, stay here, right. And, um, just out there. Just out there. Or they want to go to the back. Um, the Sunday might maybe affect them. Oh dear, no problem. All right, um, just to straighten things out, the Department of Christian Education will be here. The Women's Department will be there. Um, the men's in the conference room there. And um, which one did I leave out? The youth. The, the Snowman. The, the, the Christian, the youth and children will be here. And then the education, Department of Christian Education will be just out there. So that they're not affected by the, by the, the sun. All right? No man, the youth, the youth will be here. Because the, the, the bigger group is the youth. Huh? The Sunday school is a bigger group. All right, so whichever it is, the bigger group will be here. So let us say the Sunday school um, here, that is the Christian Education Department. So we are going to, we're going to be moving just a few of the chairs. Don't take up any chair when you, when you leave um, just yet so we can sort of organize with tables and so on. All right? So I'm going to ask you to stand as we offer um, blessings on, on, on the lunch you're going to eat. Um, the arrangement for the lunch is that you would pay in the office here. I think that instruction needs to go to the kitchen because we might just be oversubscribed. Um, and if that is the case, then you have to bear with us. So the, you, you will pay for the lunch there and you'll get a receipt to go up to the kitchen. Right? And the lunch will be served from there. All right? Right, so it's just one rep would go to pay for the lunch in bulk, right? You pay the total. Um, the talk shop is also open where you can get um, refreshments. So you pay for it at the window there, and then you go with a receipt up to the, the kitchen to collect the lunches. All right, we are trying to make it efficient. And then you can come back out here and, 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 and eat. Okay? God bless you. Please stand, everyone.
Father, we give you thanks for your great provision. You are God and you are God who provides. We pray as we are about to partake of our meals that you might bless it, sanctify it, consecrate it. That when we eat, God, it might do well to our bodies. And we continue to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Please remember you have to come back to the next um, to the next the, the closing session where we will have some feedback and so on. All right? God bless you.